you need to know that God loves you. Get ready, today's show is going to bring you hope. Hello and welcome to the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. I am your host, Heidi Mortensen, and I'm so excited to be with you here today. I'm really excited to talk to you about the comfort of deliverance. I think often we can really get discouraged because we hear about somebody who has this radical transformation, this radical process of being miraculously saved and delivered, and they don't ever have to go back to counseling again, or they don't ever have to go to deliverance or inner healing again ever. But then you're sitting there thinking, what about me? Did God forget about me? Why didn't I have this story? And we hear these amazing stories, we hear these amazing testimonies, and we're sitting there and wondering, why not me? I'm here to tell you, you guys, God didn't forget about you. God is still the God of comfort and deliverance, but it doesn't always look the way that we think. Today, I'm going to talk about God is our deliverer, but deliverance is comfort. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. I pray, God, that you be with every single one of the listeners. And I pray, Lord, for just the opening of the Holy Spirit. I keep seeing this funnel <clears throat> actually in my sessions. And I just pray right now, Lord, that that funnel will be here with the listeners today. And it's like this opening for the Holy Spirit to come in. And there's like neuroplasticity. There's like a rewiring that's happening. And so I just pray, Lord, that that's going to happen today for the listeners. That even as they are listening, Lord, that there will be there will be a rewiring in their brain to align with heaven. And Lord, I pray, God, that I only say exactly what it is that you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. We bind the enemy in the name of Jesus, and I just ask, Lord, that you come in and you speak your words of comfort today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Make sure to check out my previous episodes of the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. Um, if you haven't already, made sure to um, like and subscribe us on YouTube um, and give us a rating. We'd love to have you rate us. Um, and I also have written a book called The Brave Encourager, so make sure to check that out on Amazon. Um, so I'm excited today to talk about this topic of the comfort of deliverance. And I actually first learned about this from a recent training I went to by the Contagious Love Ministry. Um, Jennifer Martin is actually who heads this up and they did a trauma training. So she's a deliverance minister um, and, and she does um, worship. Um, she does a lot of intercession and she talked about trauma. And I was really encouraged to actually see a ministry talk about this. And in the training part where they talked about that we actually can be healed from trauma, the words that they used to talk about this was that deliverance is comfort. And this really spoke to me, this word really, really spoke to me because I think a lot of us get the idea of deliverance as this like very dramatic um, cast out in Jesus name and the demon is there and then the demon is gone and all of a sudden we feel really good and we feel completely different and there's this dramatic shift and that can happen. I mean, we read that in the Bible where Jesus cast out demons and they're totally shifted. That happened many times in the New Testament but there also are stories where the Lord is our deliverer and it doesn't happen overnight. It happens in layers and it happens in process. And you can see even David anguishing and it taking time for him to be delivered. He is going to the Lord, struggling. You know, the weeping prophet of Jeremiah just going and saying, God, I am just a youth. I don't know what I'm doing. And so there's this, this common story throughout the Bible of the suffering and the struggling. And this is why Jesus was sent to be our Lord and Savior from our discomfort for us to actually be delivered. So Jesus's identity, one of his identity is that he is our deliverer, 
but we don't always let this happen. We try to stay in control. We want to have things be nice and boxed up, and we don't allow this part of Jesus to come out and reveal himself to us so that we can actually become improved. And this deliverance isn't just from like a spirit of infirmity, like a physical issue that we have. This is for mental health issues. This is all throughout the Bible. And I want to talk about, I want to bring up a couple um, Bible verses. 1 John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this is the whole process of the gospel is that we confess our sins. God is faithful. He forgives us and we're cleansed from this unrighteousness. And part of this unrighteousness that we have within us is stuff that's not from God. And that's also trauma. That's also issues that we have that's depression that's anxiety that's unhealthy sinful choices because our unhealthy sinful choices that we have you guys that doesn't just happen because we're like this bad person that wants to use drugs we use drugs because we're numbing trauma okay we struggle with with overeating or whatever that is that sinful thing that we're struggling with because of issues from our past because of attachment issues that we have from mom and dad or maybe a previous relationship that we've had it doesn't just happen for no reason we're not just bad people okay like there is a root to this now i would say that in our flesh we will struggle and so there is also this place of being obedient having walls around us. Okay, so not, I'm going to, I want to say 100% everything is trauma, but we all have some trauma and that comes in with some sort of negative belief. I'm not worthy. I'm not loved. And so then we then take down the walls that the Lord actually naturally put up for us. Like a wall would be, you know, um, don't get drunk or a wall would be um, attend church every week. Okay. I know that that sounds like a religious thing, but it's a wall that helps us to actually make good choices. You know, you have a small group with people that are loved ones and are friends so that they keep you accountable and you pray for each other. Those are walls. That's like a loving God. He puts up walls so that we can make healthy choices so that we don't get in our flesh and we know that we can keep coming to him and, and focus on the healthy choices of being obedient. Okay, so that's kind of a different topic. I'm not talking about walls today, but I just bring that up because the walls can actually help us to make healthy choices, to not be struggling so much with those sinful choices. But I'm saying a lot of the sinful choices come from trauma. It comes from a root. It comes from a place where we didn't feel worthy. And I don't mean extensive trauma. A trauma could be a parent that worked all the time. That can be a trauma. And you being able to recognize I needed my parent there more. I'm so grateful that they provided for me. They were a wonderful parent when they were there. They were loving, they were kind, they played with me, but I needed them more. And it's important for us to be able to identify the needs that we have and to go to the Lord to get the comfort that we didn't get. This fills in needs. So instead of us getting these needs met from other people, from other things where we're kind of numbing in the world and from other things and people or working too much or throwing ourselves into us, into something else, we want to be able to learn how to identify what it is that we're, that's there so that we can go to the Lord and allow him to comfort us. Okay. First John 4, 14 says, and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. So Jesus was sent to save us from our unrighteousness, from our mental health struggles, from our trauma, from our issues, from our sins. And so we have to learn how to utilize the Lord as our comforter and deliver us so that we can become more and more like Jesus. We can have more joyful life. Okay, when we are delivered, a lot of times we hear about the joy of the Lord breaking out because all of a sudden you're set free and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm finally free and I don't have to deal with all those struggles like, oh gosh, I thought I was unworthy, but I actually was believing a lie and it's so freeing to finally be able to break free. Okay, so I, I want to step in and just talk about how the Lord can actually be our comforter and how this can work and how we can allow him to come in there and speak to those dark places. John 8, 12, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
And so Jesus comes in and he lights us up. Where there is darkness, Jesus comes in and brings this light into us. But we have to let him in. We have to be aware of this and allow him to comfort us. Okay? And so the thing about the comfort of deliverance is that we have to know that one, it takes as long as it needs to take. We are in this world of wanting to have things be this quick fix. I want to take a pill. I want to take medication and make it go away and have everything be gone right away. We will often get people who will call in the midst of a trauma or a really difficult situation and they're like, I want counseling. But then when it comes down to it, then they have to actually come and then they have to repeatedly come and then we get canceled. There's cancellations that show up and, and people think they want it. But then when it comes down to it, to schedule every week for four to six months, that actually takes commitment. Now we're talking about obedience when sometimes you don't feel like coming to counseling, but you still come because you're working through some marriage issues that really need the Lord to come and bring the comfort of his deliverance in the midst of those difficult issues, that he's revealing the light and the darkness, but we don't always want to go and, make, and take those steps and do that work. In a, in a high emotional moment, we do, but then when it comes down to it and those emotions decrease and now we're kind of like, oh, I think things are okay. I think we're, I think I'm good kind of let it go and it's like Jesus says our deliverer is gone where is he now okay so there's layers that we have from trauma demons actually will attach to us with a lie and then if that we keep believing that lie then that lie becomes a stronghold and then on top of that we have lies that come on top of that okay then you might have an interaction with someone else and you respond based on that lie and now we have another lie that's attached on top of that. So it might have started with I'm not worthy and now we have an interaction with somebody else and now it's I'm not loved. People don't want to be with me. And then we have it and now that that can be an attachment that now becomes another stronghold. And so there's layers upon layers where these strongholds and these lies can take root within our soul. So to be delivered from this, it takes time and we need to allow the comfort of the Lord to come in because we've been wounded. We have broken trust from people. And so to actually have that come in and bring healing takes time for us to trust. I have people that I've worked with for almost a year where I finally was able to get to the truth of the matter because of the trust that needed to be built. And we've got to be able to admit that, like, man, I really have, my trust really has been broken from these people or this situation. And the answer isn't to just cut people off. It's we need to get healing from those moments. And that's what the Lord does. The Lord meets us in those moments. And so I found it a fascinating verse that really just reveals this and how we kind of want to avoid this and we want to not pay attention to this. And it really kind of calls out this place of ignorance that we have as Christians. Um, so in Romans 11, 25, it says, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters. So he's speaking to believers by calling them brothers and sisters. He's not speaking to unbelievers. So that you may not be conceited, Israel has experienced a hardening and part of the number of Gentiles has come in. So he's speaking to those believers and talking about the hardening of the heart because they're becoming conceited. They know they're good. There's pride that's come up. Okay, so this is that pharisaical thinking of like, I'm good. I know the Bible or I do enough reading, or I do, I do enough of whatever this activity is, or I've gone to this kind of counseling, I'm good. But the fruit of our life isn't there yet. And so this is really just revealing in us, we don't want to be ignorant. And we don't want to act like we have it all figured out. And that there's this hardening of heart that happens. And then 26 says, and so all of Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer, capital D, will come from Zion. He will remove godlessness. 
and this is my covenant to them when I take away their sins. And so this is revealing the original design of the way God intended for him to be as our deliverer. And then us with this godlessness that comes in. And this godlessness, you guys, it can come from trauma. And so even though somebody caused trauma to you, that's the open door where the enemy now just comes in and wreaks havoc. And then we've got strongholds of all sorts of lies that wasn't even our fault. You didn't even ask for it. But now you're like, now I got to get deliverance and I got to be delivered because of what somebody else did to me? Yes. It's unfair and it's not okay. But we live in a fallen world that has free will. The Lord gives us free will so that we can choose to allow the Savior in our heart or we can choose not to. We have the power of that choice. I used to be so zealous for the Lord. I, I would still say I am, but I was so zealous and so enthusiastic that I didn't properly discern who I was talking to. And I would offer advice. I would offer encouragement and just whatever the Lord had for that person because I thought that they needed it and because I was so excited that I believed that the Lord needed that for them. And well, that's true. They do need this encouraging word. I didn't discern who and when and how to say it to. And so there were times when people would be turned off by the message that I gave. And it doesn't mean that what I was saying was wrong or was bad. Um, but it was more in my flesh when I look back. I wasn't actually slowing down to say, okay, God, what do you have for them? What's your message? And again, I'm not saying that we don't want to have, we don't want to encourage. And again, if I'd go back, I'd be able to kind of declare the details of what I have. Um, but really, I was kind of being prideful, if I really am honest with it. And it's this place of like where we think that we have it all figured out and we have the message for everyone. And so being able to admit and allow the Lord to come in in these places, he can then bring healing. I learned how to hear more and discern more who actually is ready for this, who wants to say yes to the Lord and who doesn't. It doesn't mean I stop talking to everybody that I want to talk to, but I was being too crushed. Okay. I started to struggle with trust. I started to think maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I'm not helpful. Nobody cares about what I'm saying. And all of that was in my flesh because I was being prideful, because I wasn't discerning and leaning into the Lord. Now he was gentle with me. He was not, did not, I at first was feeling shame, but as the Lord worked in me and helped comfort me, he delivered me from the places of me needing to be the speaker, <laughs> me needing to talk and me needing to say what I think and be able to back up and say, I want to actually help Lord who's needing it right now. And so it's one of the reasons why I have the podcast because you get to choose to listen to this or not. You don't have to listen to this. And so I'm so encouraged by you when you are and those who are following this and those who have their own podcasts and they have their own messages. I want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Keep speaking out what you're speaking because the Lord actually needs your voice. And if any of you have been thinking about speaking out, if the Lord has been showing you things and dreams and visions, I want to encourage you to do that. Let's go back to... Jesus is our comforter. He's our deliverer. So we know that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. We have God the Father, God the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent when Jesus died on the cross, and then he sent this comforter. He sent the Holy Spirit with us. And so when we can allow the Holy Spirit in, he can then come in and work in us and be the comfort of our deliverer. Some ways that we can do this is allowing ourselves to let go of the things of the world, get rid of that busy mind. Some things to do that are worshiping. And so being able to, that to me, that like lets go of my flesh. And honestly, it took me to go to a worship um, that was more than three songs. Honestly, that's just me. Um, I now can feel God's presence right away, but it took me a while. And I also had to take some time where I took like, one to two hours of just soaking with the Lord and just listening. 
and I took some time to fast. And so I took a week and I fasted from coffee and I would just take even like a morning to really just get rid of the fleshy stuff that I was being bothered with so I could hear more clearly from the Lord. Again, I'm just telling you some of the things I did. That doesn't mean you have to do that. Um, but worshiping is a really good way of just letting go and say, God, I just worship you and just wait. Wait on the Lord for him to come in. Start taking away the negative messages that you have. And then you can just say, God, I need your comfort. I need you to deliver me. And when you ask for that, you got to be ready because he's going to then start revealing things to you that's not about other people, but that's about you. Okay. And he's going to start pruning you just like what it talks about in John 15. So if you really want this, you need to be ready. Some other ways to let go, get out of, get out of your mind is if you do pray in tongues, you can pray in tongues. And this is for the purpose of really just letting go of your mind and getting connected with the spirit. Um, and then also getting inner healing and counseling with a Christian counselor to help guide you and move you into this process of being able to learn how to trust someone else how to be able to let the Holy Spirit into these places where trust was broken. And so he can deliver you. So deliverance doesn't always look like a dramatic demon being cast out. Deliverance can look like, oh, you're my father. You love me. I'm your little kid. Thank you, Papa, for showing me my original design. And as he comes in and loves you, a lie gets broken off, a stronghold leaves. And afterwards you're left with, you know, I don't believe that lie that I'm not loved anymore. There was no demon cast out. There was no dramatic show, but deliverance happened. Demon did actually leave, but it wasn't dramatic. And so deliverance doesn't always look dramatic. It can be he's our comforter and he's coming in and just taking away the dead branches. It's allowing somebody else to come in and love you and hug you. I often talk to my clients like I'm their parent and I go back into the history and I, and I say things that a parent could have said that brings comfort. That can bring deliverance just in the moment of getting what it is that you needed from Papa, you know, from your parents, but you didn't get it. And so it's God coming in and bringing that comfort and bringing that deliverance. So let me pray for you. Lord, I pray that every single listener right now can step in to allow you to be the comforter. Holy Spirit, I pray for an increase of your presence, an increase of you being revealed to them as the deliverer, that you are a comforting deliverer. That it doesn't need to be scary. It doesn't need to be dramatic. If it is that way, God, we thank you for that. But that you are there still being our comforter. God, I thank you that you will wait for as long as it takes. And so I break off shame that you need to be changed and get transformation quick. I break off that shame right now in the name of Jesus. And I just declare that where you are at right now is enough. The Lord loves you right where you're at. And he's meeting you right where you're at. There's no shame where you are at, but we welcome him in. I thank you, Lord, for the cracks and the life coming in, for the light that you are the light of the world and that the light of life is coming in through you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that God is revealing himself as Father, that Jesus is your friend and your advocate, and the Holy Spirit is your comforter coming in and revealing the truth of who you are and allowing the natural process of the deliverance to happen. And I also pray that you can find the right people to guide you, the right counselors, the right support people. And we thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that we will not be ignorant and that you are removing us from the godlessness, from the sins, and you are delivering us. And we thank you, Jesus, as you fill us up with your love, with your peace, with your joy, that there is laughter to overflowing. And we thank you, Lord, for filling us up from the tip of our head all the way to our feet. And we just thank you, Lord.
the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.